London. After its debut in the capital last year, the men's health survival of the fittest series is back, with more obstacles and more people willing to take on this 10,000 metre assault course in this iconic location. There'll be plenty of panting here in Battersea today, and we ain't just talking about the dog's home. We'll be finding out that mud isn't something you only find in the country. There's 10 kilometres of unusual obstacles to crawl through, splash through, and jump over. There's some heavy lifting to be done, so today our Londoners are going to be swapping their handbags and manbags for sandbags. Here you go, pal. Nice and heavy, that one. And before they get to take on some well-earned refreshments, there's one very big wall to climb. But at least before the post-race party starts, we'll ease those aching muscles with an ice bath. So let's join your race commentator, Rob Walker, to look at the trials and occasional treats that lie ahead. Well, treats is exactly the word, Dean Macy. This iconic venue, an amazing location. Normally, of course, this is off limits to the public, but very much the opposite here today. It'll be cold, it'll be wet, and it promises to be a lot of fun. 20 obstacles to be encountered. The majority of the course is contained within the power station complex, but there is a foray into Battersea Park towards the running track, and they will have to do a lap before snaking their way back into the power station complex. And by this stage, with the range and difficulty of the obstacles, the feet will be wet and the stamina will be tested. It's a brilliant all-round workout, this course. Very much a 10K with a difference. This is the last in a series of events that's come to the capital via Manchester, Cardiff, Edinburgh and Nottingham. And thousands have turned up to try to prove that Southern doesn't necessarily mean soft. So let's meet a few. So guys, first survival of the fittest and you decide to do it in these costumes. Any particular reason why? No, I think uh, it was just, uh, we looked at what the event was all about and it's all about having a bit of fun. So we just dressed up and have an enjoyable day and uh, also put us through that added pain of being sweating. So it's going to be fun, or not as the case may be. Some brave costumes and some good warm-ups as well. Plan on being in the top 100, hopefully. So quite high expectation. Yes, big time, big time. You do realise there's 12,000 people here taking part? I'll be in the bottom 100. <laughs> <laughs> More realistic expectations for some. A cast of thousands assembled here for what should be a superb day. Have you done much preparation for today? No. <laughs> but you're here for fun? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, obviously here for a laugh. What are you expecting? Win. <laughs> it won't be a fast time today, I don't think, but uh, just hopefully pull through to the end, I reckon. Every 15 minutes from 9am, waves of 350 people will be starting out from here to take on the course. But it's the Warriors in Wave 1 that will be fighting it out to see who can cross the line first in 2012. Well, there are some very competitive campaigners who fancy getting their hands on this title. Second edition of this race and competing is the man who was first to cross the line in wave one 12 months ago. Second from the right hand side there, Ross McDonald, composed and ready to once again mount what he hopes will be a winning charge to the line. This is the one to win in it. London is the one everyone wants. It's the big one, yeah. And um, last year, definitely my favorite course. It's the one I want to win. I've done some other big races this year, but this is the one I've been training for, gearing up for. Well, there's 12,000 people here today, mate. How much would it mean to you to finish in the top three? How much would it mean to you to win it? Top three would be brilliant today, out of that many people. Um, the, the main aim is to win, but just got to, yeah, top three out of that many people would be fantastic. Well, Ross McDonald's aspirations are clear. So too, this fella, Jonathan Albert. 22-year-old from Essex, a hugely experienced adventure racer, puts in a lot of miles on the road to get himself ready and get himself in shape. These sorts of events, they just make running a lot more interesting. 
a lot more exciting, a lot more upper body strength as well, so a lot more rounded. Rather than just getting out on the tarmac and just pounding out some miles, you're actually sort of pull, pulling himself up over stuff. Really good fun. Ollie Williams is another to watch closely. He's actually the Tri-Nations champion. This event and this format visits all four corners of Great Britain, and he's come out so far as the overall king. I did Cardiff and Nottingham this year, yeah. I watched the London one on TV last year, and it looked like it was worth having a go, so I thought I'd try that one out this year. And what's your best result so far this year? Um, I came second in Cardiff, so that's the first time I've actually got on the, the podium for them, so top three I'm aiming for. If it's, if it's a win, then that'll be a bonus. Well, they've talked the talk, but can they walk the walk? Now's the time to find out. Let's get over to the walker for the start of the race. Thanks, Dean. So the first wave eagerly anticipated here. There will be a supercharged start and a drive to the first of the hay bales. The 2012 event is up and running with wave one. Brilliant start by Dr. Hugo Gamal. He's the TSO equaliser and he's setting the pace early on. Jonathan Alban there, just having a few problems with the hay bales. There is Gamal on the right-hand side, sharing a joke with Steve Westlake. And sooner or later, the big contenders will come to the four second from the left. Ross McDonald now into his stride. It was a very, very fast start by Gamal, whose job is to determine the fastest courses of the series. Still leading at the moment with the hand gloves. Now Jonathan Alban coming over on the right-hand side. He's easy to spot. He's wearing the blue T-shirt. Just checked his watch, making sure he's in the right place at the right time in these early stages. Another glimpse of the start. You can see Gamal, the small figure in the centre of your picture, now just charging over the obstacles. Watch for Alban in the blue T-shirt. Runs past the camera, climbs up and actually slips back down. And that's why he lost a few seconds in the early stages of the first obstacle. A real look of intent on the face of Ross McDonald. Really wants this one. Said he'll settle for the top three, but I think he wants the victory. Now back with the race in real time. Jonathan Alban. Brilliant over this parkour course. He's so nimble and so fast, and he's already putting distance between himself and McDonald, who is in second place. Dried his hands there, Alban, before the monkey bars. Showing all his adventure racing experience as McDonald goes through on the left-hand side. Now, this isn't as big as the Wall of Fame. Let's see how he gets on with this. Well, he's so fast over these obstacles. Not only is he a good runner, but as he took a glimpse over his shoulder, he'll be pleased with what he saw because he's putting distance between himself and Ross McDonald every time he encounters an obstacle. And as Dean Macy said at the start of the show, there are 20 on this course. So McDonald has got a real battle on his hands here. Every 15 minutes, they clamber, claw and smile their way around this course. They'll be going all day. There's even a 5K in the dark. Tri-Nations champion in fourth. Well, while the leaders contend with the middle and latter stages of the event and the course, one or two taking a tumble back at the start. Wave after wave making their way out through the tyres, into the water, and doing it all in the best of spirits. Well, that's one way to ensure you're wet right at the beginning. Some brilliant fancy dress costumes as well. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Not anymore. Well, I'm sure he's enjoying it really. It does test every muscle group, this event. Now, back with the leaders. Still Jonathan Alban in control, but Ross McDonald has closed the gap just a little bit here over the tyres. But Alban is so quick when it comes to tackling each of these obstacles, whether he's scrabbling on the ground or up in full flow. Great work by the cameraman to keep up with Ross McDonald there. In, through and over the car. He really has got a battle on his hands though, McDonald. Now they're back within the power station complex itself and they get an opportunity to enter the iconic building. 
There's no time for sightseeing or photos. Sandbag on the shoulder, helmet on the head, and it's downhill towards the deceptive-looking hurdles. They might not be particularly high, but with that extra weight on the shoulder, it makes the jumping and the lifting of the legs that little bit more difficult. McDonald really needs to try and find an extra gear here. And as he starts to negotiate the hurdles, he'll glance to his right-hand side and see this fella not showing any sign of weakness just yet. Working those quads up the hill. He'll be quite happy to offload the sandbag. McDonald making slightly heavier work of the last few hurdles than the leader. And you can hear with his breathing how hard he's working. The course definitely seems as though it's harder than it was 12 months ago, but that's the idea. It's an all-over body workout. And McDonald needs to dig deep here. Can he close the gap on our long-term leader, Jonathan Alburn? Meanwhile, back at the start, they still keep on coming and still keep on smiling. Well, there's plenty of energy being generated here at Battersea Power Station today, but can they keep it going right to the end? We shall find out in just a few minutes. Welcome back to London and the men's health survival of the fittest. With 20 obstacles and over 100 pieces of equipment packed into a 10,000 metre course, this really is an event that gives you an all-over workout like no other. And it's also a course that quite possibly saved the worst till last. <sighs> Who will be the first to climb the wall and walk themselves into the history books? Let's rejoin Rob Walker and find out. Well, the former Commonwealth decathlon champion from Melbourne made that final obstacle look very, very easy. It certainly won't be quite so simple for these guys after they've completed 10 gruelling kilometres and 20 obstacles. Jonathan Alban has pretty much led from start to finish. Wave one going along in style here, and everybody will be covered in mud and absolutely soaked by the time they get to this section of the course. But hopefully they'll still be smiling. Could be a grimace from the leader, but I think deep down he's very much enjoying it and he's starting to put a real and genuine stranglehold on this race. This is Ross McDonald, who's been in second place all the way through. The ice bath, as Dean Macy was saying, pretty useful at the end of a race, but maybe not quite so welcome when you're halfway through. Auburn has had the look of a winner all the way through. Still a long way to go, but McDonald was pretty clear that he wanted to finish in the top three here today. And there's no lack of effort or intent with the obstacles. So far, he just hasn't been quite as quick as our leader. Nicky Palmer, clear and away in third place. That's cool. Obviously feeling the effects of the cold, I'm sure he'll be enjoying getting to the finish line as will this fella, a new athlete in fourth place, Stuart Penman. Meanwhile, else They are creeping towards the ultimate challenge before the finish line, though. The Wall of Fame awaits. Jonathan Alburn, commanding performance so far. One or two obstacles still to go before he gets to the eight-foot wall. But he's built himself a cushion and a lead. Do see it undone sometimes though when they come face to face with that eye-watering last obstacle Alburn is almost there he's had the complete package today he's had the speed in between the obstacles and he's had the flexibility and the strength to negotiate them very very quickly now here's the big one a little bit slow on the approach. Some try to go as quickly as possible and gain the momentum. Doesn't matter. He's through. He's there. And he is the champion. A really great performance. He was never challenged. 